Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you the power of the Mind Studio API and how we can run an AI automation as a serverless AI function within our application. I've created this demo project on the left hand side to demonstrate and it's an XJS app that's locally hosted and in this app I'm building out a storefront that has a bunch of products in it and each product has its own page and reviews on that page that a user can submit. Now, all of these reviews uh, need to be moderated uh, by a real human being. And so there's this admin mode so that uh, an admin uh, for this site can sign in, and then they will need to manually approve or delete these comments before they are publicly displayed for other users on the platform. So let's say we wanted to add the ability to automatically moderate these comments when a user posts them so that when uh, there's a comment that is totally appropriate to be posted to uh, the site, then uh, it would be posted automatically. Well, when it comes to creating this kind of validation uh, via code, it's particularly difficult to accomplish. You could do this by implementing all sorts of checks for explicit things like keyword filtering, uh, link de detection, content length, and repetitive text, and various other explicit checks. But even with that, how do you really write the validation for does this comment look like spam? And so today, you need a human moderator to do this. But with Mind Studio, you can actually make a workflow that can handle this for you. And then you can use it as a serverless AI function that takes launch variables like the product description and the review content, and then analyzes it to return a true or false value based on whether or not it seems like spam. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. The first thing that we need to do is create a new Mind Studio workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will tap on the plus button and we will create a new AI here. And we can go ahead and start with a blank AI. Now I'm going to delete uh, the system prompt here because I've actually used AI previously to generate a definition for what spam should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will copy all of this information. Uh, this was generated using my own workspace assistant. So you can see uh, here there's definition of spam content. And in my project, we will just paste all of this in. Um, and this is going to be the basis for our workflow. Now let's go ahead and we'll make our actual uh, automation flow here. And in this automation flow, uh, I'm just going to use a very simple generate text block. And in this generate text block, uh, we'll bring in the product description and the review itself, and we'll have it output a true or false answer. So let's go ahead and we'll write the prompt here. First thing we need to do is provide it some context. And for the context, we'll say something like this is the main content of the page we are analyzing. And we are going to be bringing in some launch variables that come from our application. So we'll use some special syntax called launch variables. And then we will have our product description, which we'll just call description. Next, we need to give it some information on the outputs that we want. And for this, we'll say something like if the content is spam and is not safe to post, reply only with true. Let's do the same thing for false. If the content is not spam and would be considered safe to post, reply only with false. Lastly, we need to give it uh, a task. Uh, which is to analyze the uh, the comment that's coming in or the content that's coming in. So we'll say based on the definition of spam, which we gave uh, via the system prompt, determine whether the following content is spam or not. And we'll reinforce this. We'll say something like be strict and only approve content if you are sure that it is safe and appropriate to post. Now let's give it the, the content. And for this, we'll actually uh, include the comment here. So we'll use the same launch variables uh, syntax. And we'll include uh, the the value uh, comment here. So there we go. We have our workflow all set up. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be saving this and assigning it to a variable. I don't want to actually display it to the user since there is no chat. And we'll call this a spam result. 
And now in our Terminator block, we'll change the value from behavior chat to ending the session. And what this does is it allows us to create a structured output here. So I can actually create a key value pair uh, that will be uh, sent over via API uh, later on when we implement this in our application. So let's go ahead. I'm going to have a spam result. And that is going to be directly tied to the variable name a spam result. So here we go. We'll make sure to put in uh, our variable spam result. Let's go ahead and add that in. And now it's locked in. And now we're done, right? We're done with our workflow. And we can actually test our workflow directly inside of Mind Studio. Uh, all we need to do is duplicate that workflow. And we'll go ahead and rename it. We'll call it testing. And inside of this workflow, uh, we'll actually just uh, use description and uh, and uh, comment here. So we'll go ahead and delete this. So now we have description and comment. And we're going to add a couple of user inputs uh, just so that we can quickly test this out. So we'll create a new user input. We'll call this description. There we go. And we'll create a second user input. We'll call this comment. And uh, back in our testing flow, uh, we'll make sure that description and comment are both added in. And in order to test this, uh, we can actually, uh, why don't we go ahead and just make this our entry workflow, and then we can preview this. So now we have our description. Uh, let's go ahead and put in some, some test values here. So we'll put in a, a description here. And then let's leave a, a valid comment. So we'll say, great product, highly recommend. There we go. And we can always use the debugger uh, on the side here. There we go. Great product. Highly recommend. Let's see uh, what that outputs. It should output uh, false because it's checking if it is spam. And you can see here that the spam result is indeed false. So let's go ahead and we will uh, we'll try this again with a new thread here. And we will input the, uh, the same uh, description here. And for the comment, we'll have something uh, like, uh, you know, buy my album. And we'll have HTTPS colon slash slash give me money dot org. And so this uh, clearly should be a spam comment. It's completely unrelated. So let's go ahead and continue. We should get a true value. Uh, so you can see here, we got the spam result true. So now we have proved out that our uh, AI workflow is working properly. So let's go ahead back in our project and we will publish our workflow. So let's go ahead, we'll give it a name. We'll call this is spam. And we'll say checks for spam content. There we go. Now we can go ahead and publish this AI here. So now that the workflow is published, we can actually begin implementing this inside of our own uh, application here. You can see that I have my editor open on the right hand side and this is my application. There are a couple of things that we'll need to do here. The first thing that we'll need to do inside of our application is we'll need to create the utility function called check spam or something like that that uses the Mind Studio API to invoke uh, the uh, workflow that we just created. So let's go ahead. We will uh, create a new file here and we'll call this check spam. And then we'll begin uh, writing our function out. It's called check spam. There we go. Now let's pass through a couple of arguments here. And so uh, for our arguments here, we're going to have our, uh, well, I need to look in our product data, which is where this is stored. So we have our uh, comments here. And these comments is an object. So for the object, we'll need to pull out a couple of values. First is the content of the comment, which is going to be a string value. And then there is the uh, approved uh, value, which is a Boolean. Now uh, this is an array, so we'll need to make sure that we include the array. And then the second thing that we're going to bring in uh, for our argument is the uh, description, the product description. And this is going to be a string value. Great. So now we have the beginning of our function. Let's go ahead and uh, continue writing. Now for our functions, we're calling the API. Let's go ahead and run a, a try catch here. So we'll go ahead and I don't know why it made this weird spacing here. Let's go ahead and we'll add try. There we go. And then let's go ahead and add a, a catch. There we go. And we want it to catch an error. There we go. So now we're going to have it uh, looks like it's trying to uh, determine what we want. And it actually it's exactly what we need. Uh, we're going to just have it return console uh, error here. And for our try, uh, we're going to uh, call on the Mind Studio API. Now we can do that 
uh, just by going to our workspace and going into our workspace settings. And we'll go to the API tab. And from here, uh, we'll be able to create a new API key. We can jump into API keys here and we will go ahead and create a new key. We'll call this demo and click on create. So now we have our new API key here. You can see that it has never been used and we can copy our API key. Now, if we go into the resources here uh, on the right hand, the far right tab, we'll actually be able to see an implementation of the API. And we can actually just copy this and uh, paste it into our, uh, our try here. So now we have uh, this uh, usage of the API. We might need to make some modifications to it and fill in some information. For example, we don't have a callback URL, and this is optional so that we so we can delete it. And we'll work our way through adding all of the information that we need. So uh, we need our access token. Again, our access token was the API key that we just created called demo. So I'll go ahead and copy that token, and we will go ahead and paste that here. And then we'll need our app ID. And we can find our app ID in a couple of places. First is inside of the editor in uh, the root folder under the details section, you can copy the app ID here, or you can also uh, in your app uh, on the consumer end, you can click on this gear icon and you can copy the app ID. So now that that's copied, let's go ahead and paste that in uh, our application here. Now we need to define uh, the variables that we're passing through. These were the launch variables that we created earlier. So this is the description and we need the comment. And for the values, we're just going to be pulling uh, the arguments. So we have the description. And then we actually need to reach into the comments array a bit. So we're going to go ahead and go uh, comments dot link minus one so that we actually get uh, the right comment. And then uh, we'll get the content from that comment. And uh, this is all coming from uh, my product data file, which is where all of this is being written. So uh, depending on where you have it written, this might be a little bit different. So now we have our comments. Let's uh, finally define our uh, workflow. And you can find the workflow uh, that we're using. We're going to go ahead and use our main.flow workflow. And we want to specify the workflow because, for example, uh, if it's left blank, it's going to use the entry workflow. And in this case, main.flow is not the entry workflow. So we want to make sure that we specify main.flow so that it uses the right workflow. So now we're almost set up. Uh, there's just one last thing that we're going to need to do here. You'll notice that if we run uh, the is spam a workflow, it's going to return this spam result. And the spam result is going to be a string. And so what we actually need to do here is we need to convert string to Boolean so that we can use it on our page when we write uh, our data here because we want this approved value to be a Boolean. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say let is spam and make that a boolean value and then we can do something like is spam equals data dot result dot spam result and then uh, we'll make sure that this is too lowercase And then we want to check if that's equal to true. So what this is doing essentially is it is uh, taking the string, making it lowercase, and then seeing if the true value is equal to the string true, which should make is spam a, a Boolean value of true or false. So there we go. We have our uh, function created that runs the Mind Studio workflow and gets back uh, the uh, and gets back the result converts to a Boolean. The last thing we need to do is just return the value. So we'll return is spam. And now we're all set. We can save uh, this, this utility function. Now inside of our page here, we want to make sure that we're on uh, the correct page. And we're going to want to import uh, that utility. And it looks like it's uh, auto-completing for me. That looks right. And then we're going to call the function within uh, this page here. So I have this uh, section handle comment. We can go ahead and add it inside of the try here. So we'll have const is spam equals await. We'll run the check spam function. And then we'll need to uh, add our arguments uh, in here as well. So this is an array for the content.
And then uh, we need to add the product description. So now we're calling the function. Let's actually use it in a couple of different places. The first is if it does detect spam, we want to actually create an alert. So why don't we go ahead and do that here. If it is spam, then we'll create an alert. And that alert's gonna say something like, your comment has been flagged as spam and will be reviewed by a team member. There we go. And then the last thing we need to do is uh, we actually, uh, when we write this uh, this data, we're gonna uh, actually write the opposite of is spam because if it is spam, then uh, the check spam would show up as true. We actually need to make it not approved, so that's false. And if it is not spam, then it will uh, get a false value for the check and then we need to make the opposite so that it is approved, making this true. So now we have it all set up. Let's go ahead and test this out. We're gonna go ahead and refresh our page here. And we can we should be able to see if we write a, a spam comment, that alert. So let's go ahead and write a spam comment. So this is great, but you should buy my album here https colon slash slash uh, make me money dot org so let's go ahead and we'll post this and check to see if it uh, creates the alert here so there we go you can see that our comment has been flagged as spam and will be reviewed by a team member and it is now inside of the admin mode where a person can approve or delete uh, what's where the efficient parts coming in is if it's okay to post uh, we no longer need to approve it, right? And so we can do that here. So let's go ahead and say something like, I love this desk organizer. It makes my life so much easier, well worth the money. There we go, we can post this review. And you can see here that it posted automatically without a problem. So now the AI is detecting whether or not it is spam. It's all correct. And inside of Mind Studio, we can go ahead and access all of the logs. We can do this in a couple of different places. We can see here uh, that we get all of the recent logs every time the API is run. So you can see uh, if we load up the page that uh, we should be able to see the last comment. Here it is. I love this desk organizer. Uh, makes my life so much easier. And we can also see uh, the uh, the result, the spam result is false, meaning it is not spam. And we can see all of our uh, runs for our requests here. We're also able to see an overview of all of our requests. And the other place is inside of the debugger. We should be able to uh, see that this was not spam. It was run a minute ago. Um, we can see here, if we refresh the page, uh, that all of the launch variables are running properly. And we can see how much uh, this ended up costing us in order to run. So it looks like it was less than a, a, a tenth of a cent. <laughs> It was less than a tenth of a tenth of a cent. So there you go. Uh, this is a great example of how leveraging AI can really help make your applications much more robust um, and help you with all of that sort of fuzzy logic that might not be easily accomplished via code, but is actually very easily accomplished when running an, an AI as a function within your uh, application. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I know it's a bit of a long tutorial, uh, but thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.